Welcome, Irish fans, to the tunnel here at Notre Dame Stadium. Beautiful day. I'm Jack Nolan. He's Reggie Brooks, and Reggie is here to give us his keys to the Notre Dame USF game on Saturday. Take it away. Well, you got to really start with this offense. I think we need to start fast, first of all, offensively, and really get after him. And then defensively, put pressure on the quarterback. We have to come at him fast and furious, and I expect a special team's touchdown right out the gate. Reggie, thank you. A great way to get us into our third edition of Irish Connection. Irish! Now we're going to steal cable lock out, power this thing back. We're working on hand speed, and now we're working on power punch. We're trying to stamp ourselves lethal weapon. Lethal weapon. Like when you fight a professional boxer, those things are lethal weapons. We want to stamp you lethal weapon. Let's see how you punch this thing. How hard you can hit it. Said hit. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. We should have a short six inch power step with it. A short six inch power step. You don't want to over exaggerate the power step. A short six inch power step. Press it back. Let's see the straight. Over the past couple of weeks, we've spent a lot of time talking to Notre Dame players about their strong finish to the 2010 season. And to a man, they have all given much of the credit for that finish to strength and conditioning coach Paul Longo. Here is Coach Longo and the players talking about that program in their own words. You know, I've been in this thing 25 years. And, and you know, over the years, it, it, we've continued to develop the program and tweak it here and there. And, and, and I guess I, I'd pretty much say, in a nutshell, um, we adhere to what we call the 2080 rule, which would be 20% of what you do gives you 80% of your results. So once we've diagnosed that 20% in each individual kid, then we, we really focus on that 20%, get the 80% of the results out of there, and then we fill in the blanks from there for each, each individual. A lot of what we do too is, 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 uh, has to do with leadership and, and internal motivation. So my, my marker is always if I could walk out of that room and they're still working at a championship level without me having to stand over them and teach them and you know how hard they need to work or you know drive them myself. I want them to be able to do it and, and drive each other. So we're really trying to build as much leadership into, into what we're doing uh, from a team standpoint. It's the attitude and uh, the motivation and uh, the, the will to drive yourself to um, you know pass that level of you know when you think you know you had it all in um, to go past that you know level of you know pushing it and getting through you know your weakest link and uh, just making sure that you push yourself and you know you strive to be better and be great. Without buy-in, you've got nothing. You know, and and uh, it's 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 uh, it's something that's the first goal when you when you when you go to a new program is is you got to get buy-in and, and 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 it's not easy to get. But uh, that's the first goal that we try to get. Strictly physically, he's, he's gotten us in, in great shape. A lot of guys have lost body weight, our body fat, and really you know, trimmed up and, and are leaner football players. And then at the same time, he's really, you know, with that, you're, you're mentally tougher. If you're, if you're able to, to be more conditioned than your opponent, then you can lock in and, and understand your assignment every play instead of getting fatigued and slacking off on certain plays. He, he just does a great job in helping um, the players realize that you know strength and conditioning is just as important as meeting rooms. It's just as important as a playbook, and it's just another dimension to the football game. And so he he brings that a, a new type of energy, and he's like the third head coach out there for you know, for for me. Um, there's Coach Kelly, then there's Coach Diaco, then you know there's Coach Longo. They're all pretty much in the same play. You know, we're, we're looking to peak in, in, uh, in October and November, so everything that we do is, is set up for that. That's the way he, that Coach Longo designed the program, is for us to peak at the end of the season, really. So we're, we're, we're building up throughout the season where, you know, typically you're getting weaker and you get dinged up and get injuries and you just kind of, your body just kind of crumbles as you go through the season. And I've, you know, I've felt that before. Um, and last year at the end of the season, I felt... I felt ready to go, and I'd had you know some nicks and bruises throughout the season, but just the things that he does keeps us strong and limber. That's that's his entire goal. Um, you know, his he's got it all structured so that we peak in November, and you know that's that's been huge for us. Um, you know, we weren't getting that done before, and you know we got evidence of it as the way we finished last year. That you know what he's doing, he knows what he's doing, and it's paying off. 
Longo Beach is is the uh, it's about an 80 yard strip of uh, of of sand that we have. It's maybe five yards wide, so we can fit at least three guys in there. And and really, what we're trying to do with that is just get them to be able to compete and sprint in the in the uh, in the sand without having all the pounding. Uh, probably the the most difficult thing that that uh, that we have to do is to get these guys. Uh, you know, into peak condition and, and uh, get them better in everything they do without getting them hurt. And that's just one of the ways that, uh, that we use to, uh, you know, keep the pounding down, especially with those 300 pounders. I mean, I, I can do it all game long. Um, you know, once you're, you know, once you get your body in, in, the, in the right shape, it makes it easier to play at a high level, you know, more than just, you know, one series or two series, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, I talked to Coach Kelly about that a little bit last year after the first game. He said, you know, you're, you're kind of slowing down a little bit in the second half. And, you know, so I kind of made that my, my motivation to, you know, make sure I was able to go as hard as I could the entire game. The hill uh, is about a 50-yard uh, straight up. It's about a 20-degree angle that, uh, that we had them built that on. And, and again, it's, it gives us a chance to, uh, to uh, compete. And, and we sprint up the hill and... and Kids compete when they sprint up the hill. It's a, it, they actually enjoy it, and they, and they don't really realize just how much work they're doing, as opposed to maybe running upstairs. So it's something we can do, uh, you know, make very competitive. It's a it's a speed oriented thing, and it's a little less uh, uh, pressure and 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 uh, on the hamstrings, so that we can we can train at a high level without having to worry too much about that. It helps me um, do everything better, basically. Um, get to the ball faster, hit harder. Um, last longer in my stamina um, and you know just be able to be in positions to make more plays. You know when it, when it comes to uh, to the weights um, you know so much of it is is uh, from a leverage situation so if you've got longer arms or you know shorter legs you're at an advantage or a disadvantage so really it's uh, a lot of things we do in terms of the weights is how fast you can move the weight not, uh, not how much you can the change, uh, what they do is they, they increase the weight as you get through the sticking point. So they, they really allow you to accelerate the weight through the full range of motion as, a, as opposed to if you don't have the chains on, you're, you're, you're decelerating the weight. The guys, you know, obviously have uh, a year under their belt. So physically, I think they're, they're more prepared. I know they're more prepared physically in, in terms of uh, Volume, how much, uh, how much work they can do over, you know, a, a certain period of time. Um, I think their bodies have changed quite a bit in terms of uh, being able to run our up-tempo offense and and be able to, you know, uh, acclimate to the tasks that we have them do on the field. Uh, and they know what to, what to expect, which is, you know, huge. Every day they know what to expect, so, you know, they know what they're going to do tomorrow. They know what they're going to do the next day, and, and that's a big factor. The steps that they, they make are not always on the front end. You know, in, in other words, it's not always how much they can do or how much higher they can jump. It's, it's to be able to, to, uh, to perform at that level in the fourth quarter. And that, that's what we're talking about when you hear us. A, a lot of times you'll hear the word volume. That's what we're talking about is the, the ability to, to uh, run fast and jump high and get from point A to point B in the fourth quarter as well as the first quarter. He kind of keeps us, you know, interested in what we're doing and, and ready to go every day and, and building us up to where we can handle, you know, the type of offense, especially that Coach Kelly runs, you know, a lot of plays in the game, which in turn, normally the defense has a lot of plays too. So he builds it up to where we can handle a lot of volume, you know, a lot of sprinting and, and just a lot of back and forth. So we had to get good conditioning as well as being fast. What is the goal of your strength and conditioning program? Oh, a broad question. We have all kinds of obvious to win, to, to help uh, Notre Dame football win, number one. Everything we do is uh, in one way or another, either directly or indirectly connected to winning. Just remember, remember your first snap here? Yeah. What happened? Um, I remember Coach called my name, and at first I didn't really want to accept the fact that he was putting me in the game. Because I kind of want to tell them I don't want to go in the game, but uh, I went in the game and as a blitz to the right, and we played Nevada, and uh, Kaepernick decided to scramble, and all I remember was just being all tense and just running as fast as I could, and I made a 
fortunately I made a tackle so quickly it became reality that you know I was playing college ball. For 11 years, a Holtz roamed the sidelines, Lou Holtz. Now this Saturday, another Holtz will be roaming the sidelines here at Notre Dame, but across the way, Lou's son Skip, a Notre Dame graduate, a former Notre Dame player, and now the head coach at USF. It is a big game for both teams, and we know you have a lot of questions, so we have put together comments from Notre Dame's players, coaches, and even our own UND.com analysts to provide you with everything we think you need to know heading into this weekend's contest. South Florida is going to be a great uh, challenge for us. I think it starts when you talk about South Florida with their head coach, Skip Holtz, has done a very, very good job in a, in a very short period of time. I think what people need to understand is that he's got great experience as a head coach at UConn, obviously starting a program that, you know, was uh, a non-BCS program and, and bringing it up. Uh, then obviously East Carolina did a great job always playing up to his competition. So the thing about Skip, he's mentally and physically tough. And he understands the game, sharp guy, and, and I've said this before, this game scares me more than any of the first four just because of who's coming in and how he prepares you know, and how he's learned how to prepare from Coach Holtz and how to start fast. This team, is, the South Florida team, is going to come in here, play hard, and they're going to play hard for Coach Holtz because of that connection he has. They want to come in here and win the game for Skip. I think uh, as it relates to players, you start with B.J. Daniels, the quarterback, who, you know, obviously I've gotten a chance to, to know uh, when I was in the Big East, uh, we had to try to defend B.J. Daniels, and it's a, it's a challenge, to say the least. He's extremely athletic. Uh, it's been a challenge for every single opponent that they've faced every time he's ever been at quarterback. Uh, he's an outstanding athletic player, and he's not just fast. He's got vision. He has not only short space quickness, but long speed, and he's a big player, so he's got contact balance. So uh, it's, it's, it's a challenge. It's a problem. It's tough. You know, you have to, uh, you know, be very disciplined in uh, your coverages and things like that. And, uh, B.J. Daniels is an awesome quarterback. He's uh, he's a very elusive player, and uh, it's exciting to play him. Oh, it's 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 a lot. It's a lot on the plate. You know, you got to be a gap and assignment sound, and you got to uh, you know, you got to keep you know, as a defense line, you got you know, we got to keep him contained. We got to keep him in the pocket, and we got to uh, make him throw. Defensively, uh, experience in the back end of their defense. Uh, Grissom on the defensive line is, uh, you know, he reminds me a little bit of a Lewis Nix in terms of his size and. Hard to move out of there, a physical player. Um, linebacker, uh, Lattimore and Barrington are, are guys that run the ball and, and certainly have very good experience there. They have speed at all levels and they get to the quarterback. They did lose their best pass rusher uh, to the draft, so the question is who's going to step up and take that role. Um, I think their, their biggest difficulty is going to be is how they're going to match up with us because uh, we do have a lot of weapons and I think that's going to take away from some of their pass rush. So as you bring this team out onto the field for the first game of the year, how do you balance being less excited and more businesslike with showing the kind of emotion uh, that a football team needs to be successful? I think initially it's just going out there and being loose, you know, not, um, you know, especially taking in some of the younger guys that are going to have to contribute for us on, on Saturday uh, and making sure that, you know, they're relaxed and, you know, they understand that it's it's business time. And You know, I'm just thinking, my head's like in space right now. It's going to be my first snap. I haven't played a down of football in like two years, so, you know, I'm going to be happy about it, but I still have butterflies, you know. But when I get in, I'll be ready. Feeling, feeling's great. I'm, uh, we're preparing hard. We're doing good. Everybody's buying in, and uh, you know, I think not only me, but it's uh, everybody else is having the same feeling as I do. I think we're ready to get after South Florida. And that will do it for the third edition of Irish Connection. We hope you enjoyed it. But before we go, a reminder, the best place to go for the most complete analysis and the quickest highlights of Saturday's game here in the stadium between Notre Dame and USF is right here on UND.com when the official Notre Dame football post-game show hits the air right after the game. Mirko Yurkovich and Reggie Brooks will join me. We hope you will join us as well. Until then, I'm Jack Nolan. For all of us here at UND.com, thanks for watching and go Irish.